And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. I come to praise the Lord, and in praising, we want to thank him. Yes. Thank you, Lord, yes. for all you've done for me. Yes. Missionary Marshall coming at this time. We thank you, Lord. Come on, give the Lord a hand as she come. In Jesus' name, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, Lord. Oh! 
Every hour, I want to thank you for mercy. I want to thank you for so much grace. I want to thank you for loving me, Lord. I want to say thank you. to be in the house again. The Lord has given us another blessed week. Kept us in our right mind. And we are here to glorify him. Magnify him. And praise him for what he has done in our lives. Mainly for saving us from our sin. Delivering us out of the hand of the enemy. We have joy, unspeakable joy, that we render unto him in thanksgiving for doing what he did in sending his son to die for our sin. And I don't know about everybody else, but I thank God for the precious gift that he gave us, the Holy Ghost. That is our keeping power. That would give us power over the power Amen. of the enemy. Amen. And we do invite you, if you ever are in the Central Georgia area, to feel free to come and be in any of our services. Our ministry is in three locations, Forsyth, Georgia, Amen. Fort Valley, Georgia, Amen. and here in Lazella, Georgia. We begin our services every Sunday morning with Sunday school yeah. starting at 9 a.m. Amen. And I recommend that the whole family comes out for Sunday school. Yeah. Because Sunday school is where you will learn more 
because you have an opportunity to interact. You can bring out your thoughts and ideas, and we help one another. If you have questions about the subject of the day, you can ask your questions, and hopefully someone there will be able to answer whatever question you have concerning that lesson. Amen. And we break off into three different age groups. We have a primary class, junior class, and adult class. Amen. And you and your family will fit in yes. one of these classes. Amen. Immediately we following Sunday school, we go into our morning worship service. Yes. It starts at 11 a.m. In our morning service, everyone is free to testify the tale of how good God has been to them. Amen. Everyone who is saved has a testimony. Amen. And God did not save you just to hold and to keep right. what he has done for you. Amen. But he desires that we all share yes. our testimony. Amen. All of us have a checkered past. And we all were in sin. Right, right. And the Lord delivered us from some issues that we all had. And we share those testimonies with everyone because someone may be in the congregation that's going through what we have been delivered from. And that is the purpose of our testimony. Again, to show that if God can do it for us, he can do the same thing for you. And this is at all three locations every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Then we all convene here in La Zella for our evening service Amen. starting at 7 p.m. This is the service that we take for television. Right. Also is the service that we go live with on Facebook. Amen. And so if you're viewing right now, yes. we thank you for tuning in to this service. If you're viewing by television at a later date, we thank you for viewing by television. If you are on Facebook and you desire to link up with us, just do a search for the Lazella Pentecostal Church and like us. Then anytime we go live or we have announcements, you will be notified of what is going on in this ministry. We also thank God for now allowing us to be on YouTube. I know many people may not be on Facebook, but there are many people that are on YouTube. And if you would like to access us there, just do a search for the Lazella Pentecostal Church. And we post videos, the same uh, videos that will be going to, te to the television station is going to be posted on our YouTube page. So you can go there and check it out there. We thank God for all the avenues that he is creating for us to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out. If you're on Twitter, you can get us there. Just do a search at Liz, L-I-Z, Penty, P-E-N-T-E, Church, C-H-U-R-C-H. -H. And once you you get there, you can like us there, and we can tweet back and forth. Right. We post tweets daily, Amen. mainly scriptures, yes. that will encourage and enlighten you. Right. So we encourage you to check us out there. We're using all the avenues that are available right. in order to get your attention yes. to see that we all need Jesus. Amen. Our address here is 7545. Knoxville Road, Lazella, Georgia. Yes. If you uh, have a navigation system, just enter that address into it, and it will lead you from wherever you are to here. Amen. And we thank God for our church website. Right. If you desire to go to it, <coughs> excuse me, do, uh, just go uh, do it, uh, put into your address bar, right. Lazella Pentecostal Church. Dot com, and whenever you do so, you would go to our church website, right. www.lizella 
church, C-H-U-R-C-H, dot com. And once there, you can check out our pages that we have posted there. The main thing I want you to view is the tracks that we have written by the founder of this ministry, Apostle Albert Phelps. And once you view those tracks, I encourage you to view the other pages. If you need direction to our sister churches, the best way to get that information is at the church website. Click on the maps and addresses button. Whenever that page loads, click on the location you desire to attend. Enter in a starting address Amen. in your device, laptop, phone, computer, whatever. Yes. We'll uh, print out a map that you can print out yourself on paper, and you can use that map to get to any of our locations. So we thank God for everything that he is doing within this ministry. Our main focus is to lead people to Christ. We are not a fund-raising ministry. And I do want to give one more address. Our mailing address is 7697 Knoxville Road, Lazella, Georgia, zip code 31052. We do thank those of you who are donating, those who are giving to the ministry, we want to tell you that we appreciate everything that you are doing to assist us in getting this word out. And as I said earlier, the, the main focus of our ministry is to lead people to Jesus. If you desire to be saved or if you need prayer, we ask that you call us during our national television hour, which is from 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern Time on Sundays. If you call during that window, most likely, you will speak to someone. But if our lines are full at the moment, you will be going to voicemail. If you will, leave a brief message along with a callback number, and we will return your call that Sunday evening. If you call any other time through the week, it will be the following Sunday before we return your call, but we will return your call. So again, we just thank God for everything that he has done for us. And we're looking forward to what he is going to do. Now are you ready in the house to continue forth with your praise and worship? The devotional leaders coming at this time. Give the Lord praise as they come. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
why you're standing. I want you to get your Bibles in your hand. And I want you to lift them up and shake them in the devil's face. And I want you to repeat out to me, this is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I believe what it says to believe. I come to the Lazella Pentecostal Church to be taught the Word of God. I will not serve the devil. I will not live in sin. Jesus Christ died for my sin. And the blood of Jesus cleansed me from all sin. I am Christ-like. I am born again. And I have power, power. Power over the devil. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. Oh, I give him praise. I give him glory. And I give him honor. Because I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God. I'm talking out to everybody that believe. I don't know about you, but I am a believer in the power of God. I honor God for being here tonight. Thank God for Jesus. Thank Jesus for coming into this world, giving his life for our sin. I thank him for Apostle Phelps and all the work that he done unto the Lord. And I thank God, praise God, for the pastors, the assistant pastors. I thank God, praise God, for the missionaries, the mothers. Praise God for all of our ministers. I thank God, praise God, for our missionaries, our deacon, chairman deacon, and all of our deacons. I thank God for everybody that sits in the body of Christ. We're here to honor him and let him know that we appreciate what he done for us. Because he didn't have to do it, but he did. He didn't have to bless us, but he did. He didn't have to save us, but he did. He didn't have to give his life for us, but he did. I'm here to give him praise. Here to give him glory and honor. I do want to take a little time out to thank God. You know, for all of the people that write us, send their tithe and their offering and their donations to this ministry. And I thank God for them helping us to keep this going. Because with your help, we are able to contend You're to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. I thank God, praise God, for my cousin from North Carolina being here tonight. I thank God that she support us. And I want her to hear it from me. Thank you. I appreciate what you do. Because you don't have to do it. But I thank you for giving to this ministry. A ministry of faith and power. Again, I just thank God for all of these blessings. That he has bestowed upon us and. We're going to go into the Word of God, and I'm going to ask you to turn to the book of Hebrew, the 12th chapter. People, God is awesome. Hebrew 12, 
and I'm going to read the first verse and the second. And when you get it, I want you to shout, I got it. God is good. Hebrew 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so do so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand are the throne of God. God bless the reading of his word. And if I use for a subject this afternoon, my subject is, we have a great cloud of witnesses. I'm talking about us. We have a Great cloud of witnesses. Anything that you want to know how to do, you can go into this book. This book is your road map to get you where you want to go. And there is no greater witness to show us how to do something than Jesus, the Christ, the Son of God. If you want to know how to be holy, you ought to go to Jesus. If you want to know how to live right, you ought to go to Jesus. Whatever your circumstance it is, Jesus can work it out. I said, Jesus can work it out. You see, the Bible said we are compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses. We got some witnesses in that book that went through some hard times. But the Lord he brought them through. We had people that were down and out. But Jesus, he brought them through. We had people that were sick and they needed to be healed. Jesus, he brought them through. He's a miracle worker. He's a healer. He's a keeper. He's a mind regulator. He's a leader. I'm talking about Jesus. He's the great I am. I'm talking about the master. Whatever you need, God got it. Now, now we're compassed about with a great cloud of witnesses. In other words, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm surrounded. I'm surrounded. I am surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Everywhere I look in the word of God, I can find me a witness. 
I see where the word says, don't stop. I see where the word says, go ahead. I see where the word tell me it's all right. And people, if you got Jesus, it's all right. But I want you to know, Jesus got to be first in your life. I'm going to say it again. He got to be first in your life. He's not going to be second. He don't play that. He said, if I ain't first in your life, I'm not going to be in your life. You can't put nothing or nobody before Jesus. Because now he's telling us in his word, let us. There's something you're going to have to do. Let us lay aside every weight. You got something holding you down? You got something holding you back? You need to get rid of it. If it's stopping you from doing what God said do, you don't need it. I don't need nothing that's going to stop me from doing what God told me to do. Because God done told me to lay every weight. And the sin would do it so easily. Beset us. We got to get rid of it. Oh, you can't get rid of it by yourself. You got to have Jesus. Jesus know that we had to have him. Because we are no more our own. We done been bought with a price. We have to do it God's way. Now he says that we got to run with patience. The race that is set before us. It sometimes takes a little patience for you to get through it. Sometimes you got to have a little patience to see the light. Sometimes you got to wait a little while. Sometimes pray God, because see, everybody want it right now. But all the time, it ain't going to happen right now. Sometime you're going to be tested by God to see if you really want it. Sometimes God say, I'm going to see if you really want it. I'm going to let you wait a little while. I'm going to see if you can hold out. Some people say a day. Some say a week. Some say a year. It don't matter how long it takes, as long as you're working on it. Because we got somebody in this book, they did it. They waited. We got some sick folks in here. One lady, she was sick for 18 years. But she waited. She waited. She waited. Until she got what she wanted. Had the man at the beautiful gate of the temple. He'd been crippled all his life. He could no wise walk. They had to carry him there and lay him there every day. And he would ask for money. He asked for alms. Alms. Alms for the poor. Alms for the poor. But Peter and John, they had them been up in the upper room. They came out of the basement. They went up in the upper room. They stayed there 10 days. They received something all the way from heaven. It was the Holy Ghost. It was the power of God. And when they received it, they got out of there and said, let's go devil hunting. Went up to the beautiful gate of the temple, seeing that lame man there, asking for alms, alms, alms for the poor. Peter looked on him. 
him and John, they fasten their eyes on him. Oh, yeah, he just knows he's I'm finna to get, oh, my goodness, I feel my help coming on. He said, I'm finna to get something now. But Peter and John told him, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, but such as I have, but such as I have, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, rise up, rise up, and walk. Never walked a day in his life. You may be seated. He never walked a day in his life. But the powerhouse was there. I said the powerhouse was there. They reached down and got him by the hand. The Bible said they lift him up. And when they lift him up, his feet and ankle bone receive strength. And the Bible said he went leaping and praising God and went into the temple and broke up a prayer meeting. People, I'm telling you, we'll come past about with a great cloud of witnesses. We don't have to do in and everything to make it with the Lord. You got a lot of people that are doing some of everything. And they say they are children of God, preachers of God, deacons of God. They are there robbing, robbing the people. They in it for the money. You know, they don't get enough at that place. Somebody else offer them a dollar more. They will leave you. And they'll go somewhere else. But see, Jesus didn't do it. These witnesses that I read about in this Bible... They were not money hungry. They didn't ta even take up offerings. And any time that Jesus needed some money, he said, Peter, go down there and get the money out of the fish mouth. There was no ceremonies. There was no money raising schemes. There was no pastor's anniversary. There was no church anniversary. There were no rallies. And our folk these days done got hung up on money. And God going to get you for it. And he told me to tell you. Somebody got to stand in defense of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Might well be me. I know I'm going to get some calls on it, but that's all right. They say I'm a rabbi riser. That's what they call me. I'm serious. They say, you're always meddling. I ain't meddling. I'm telling you the truth. Y'all keep on supporting these greedy preachers and see what God going to do to you. The Bible said the love of money is the root of all evil. While some have covered after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. He said, thou man of God, flee these things. See, one thing about a howling, he don't care for the people. I'm talking about a greedy preacher. He ain't studying you. He just won't get your money. The hell don't work, ain't got no job. Some people say, well, you ain't got no job. And yes, I do. I've been working there ever since God saved me. God called me to preach in 1975. Some of y'all can't count that for. God called me to pastor the church in Fort Valley in 1980. 
I pastored down in, in Fort Valley from 1980 to 1997. And, I, and nobody never gave me no offering. Never gave me no donation. All of my help, it come from the Lord. Because I had a job. I had a job. Warner Robins Alpha Bays gave me bread and meat. I didn't have to go around depending on it. See, see, one thing about money, that money make you depend on it. And when people give you money, there's a whole lot of things you can't say to them if you want more money. You're going to have to satisfy these folks. Oh, you spot. I want you to turn on over. I'll read this scripture to you real quick. St. John 10 and 10. Just flip on over there to St. John 10 and 10. I know y'all don't like me talking about this, but that's all right. What you going to do? What you going to do? What you going to do? Jesus said, I got your back. St. John 10. And I'm going to begin reading at the 10 first. The thief cometh not. But for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giving his life for the sheep. But he that is in howling. And not the shepherd who owned the sheep or not. He seeth the wolf coming. And leaveth the sheep. And fleeth. And the wolf catches them. And scatters them. But the hireling fleeth. Because he is a hireling. And cares not for the sheep. He's a hired help. See, when you hire somebody, you got the plan. But when, and I'm talking to you, young people, young preachers, and those of you that are gonna become men and women of God. Don't never get hung up on the money. Because money will call you not to trust in Jesus. See, I have to have him. I'm addicted to him. I got to have some Jesus. I got to eat him. I got to drink him. Bloop, 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 bloop. I got to do it every day. I got to have this word. This is my spiritual food. This is what my soul hunger for. That other bread, it won't last. You eat that natural bread, it ain't going to tell you where you want to go. And when you start taking people money, you're going to start bending rules. See, I, I don't bend the rules. If you're wrong, I'm going to tell you you're wrong. If you ain't doing like you ought to do, I'm going to tell you you ain't doing like you ought to do. If you're not putting God first, I'm going to tell you you need to put God first. I'm going to tell you. I ain't going to sugarcoat it. Because, see, if I do, God going to get me. And if you look over in Revelation 22 and 8, it says, For I testify unto every man that hears these words are the prophecy 
of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book, of uh, this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So you can't add. You can't say a thing to make folks feel good. And you got no right to have no anniversary because you didn't get it from Jesus. Jesus was the son of God. He didn't have no anniversary. And if anybody ever ought to have an anniversary, it sure ought to have been Jesus. Look what he done for us. If anybody ever ought to have any such programs, it should have been Jesus. Jesus didn't just come down here. But look what he did. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Shed his blood on the cross. He didn't have to do it. And some of us are so sorry. You just make God sick. Because you won't do what he tells you to do. And if anybody ought to be in love with anybody, you ought to be in love with Jesus. And you can't love Jesus and you won't do what he said. You got to do what he said. And you can't come to Jesus with excuses. Always got an excuse for why you ain't doing what God told you to do. Neither bring, don't need to bring it to me. Because it ain't going to fly. If I got to live holy, you got to live holy. If I got to live free from sin, you got to do it too. I'm talking about folks that know better. I ain't talking about the babies. I'm talking about folks that know better. God requires you to do better when you learn better. See, I got all mine from this book. I don't have you raising me no money. My birthday. My cruise. Somebody said the other day, said, when you going on, I said, I ain't never been on a cruise in my life. It's my choice. I don't want to get on the boat. Not that I can't go. I don't want to go. So well, you ain't going to the Holy Land, right up under my feet, I'm walking on Holy Land. I'm walking on Holy Land. I'm walking on Holy All of this land is holy unto the Lord. We got a great cloud of witnesses. How do you stack up? How do you stack up to Mary? How do you stack up to Martha? How do you stack up to Peter and John? And you take him from God. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Because God ain't going to tell you to do something. And he knows you can't do it. He's not that kind of God. God done measure to every one of us a measure of faith. But he, he said you got to use it. I ain't talking about babes in the Lord. I'm talking about somebody that done growed. You learn more, you do more. See, the reason why I can't say what these other folks say, because of what I know. God hold me responsible. When he done told me and he know I know, 
He said, you better tell them. The only reason why I'm telling you is to save my soul. I'm trying to get there. Because I got people that I got to stack up against. I got to stack up against all them people in that Bible. And if you go back to the Old Testament, those people didn't even have access to the Holy Ghost. And the Bible said, if you go back in, 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 in the book of Hebrew and go to that 11th chapter, they refused. Some of those people refused to be delivered. They refused to be set free. I got to stack up against the old people. But God going to say, they did it. And you telling me you can't do what I tell you to do? What kind of person you think I am? I used to have a song that, but I ain't going to sing it. People, we got a great cloud of witnesses. I'm almost finished, but I got to read this to you. 1 Timothy 6. And I'm going to begin reading at the 12th verse. And this is what Apostle, Apostle Paul told Timothy. He was young in the Lord. He was a young preacher. He was just getting started. Now, Apostle Paul, was, as one of his fathers, was like his father to him. And Paul told Timothy in this 12th verse, he said, fight. The good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou also call and has professed a good profession. Before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God who has quickened all things. And before Christ Jesus who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. That thou keep this commandment without spots. Do y'all see what it said? Keep this commandment without spots. Unrebukable until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Which in time past he shall show you. Y'all see? Who is the blessed? And only potentiate the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, who also has immortality dwelling in the light which no man can approach, unto whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom the honor and power everlasting. Then he says, Amen. That being meditate on it a little bit. He said unto him, I charge them which are rich in this world that they be not high minded. Y'all see that? Because some of y'all got a high mind. It's so high, Jesus can't reach you. Here it is in the Word of God. Do you see it? He don't want you to have that kind of mind. He's letting us know here. Not trust in uncertain riches. You want to get rich quick. So you go out and do anything to get rich. Uncertain thing. But in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That they do good. That they be rich in good works. Ready to distribute. Willing to communicate. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. 
that they may lay hold on eternal life. It's all about everlasting life. We got some witnesses we got to go up against. Oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid and profane and vain babbling. And oppositions are science falsely so-called. Which some professing them have error concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. Okay. We praise God for you watching the Pentecostal Bow Hour telecast. We invite you to watch all of our telecasts. We invite you to be with us in our services. We're in three locations, Forsyth, La Bella, and Fort Valley, Georgia. We begin every Sunday morning with Sunday school at 9 a.m. Morning worship begins at 11 a.m. And our evening services are here at the La Bella Pentecostal Church beginning at 7 p.m. We're in Bible study every Monday night here at the La Bella Pentecostal Church beginning at 7 p.m. We're also in Bible study in Fort Valley at the Fort Valley Pentecostal Church beginning at 7.30 p.m. So tune in to the Pentecostal Bow Hour Telecast. over my circumstance. You reign, you reign, you reign. All of my circumstances. you do. 